In the previous couple of videos, we've been taking recurrence relations and we've been converting them to explicit formulas. But we haven't talked about how do we know that our explicit formula is correct? How do we know that we've come up with the proper or the correct explicit formula for that recurrence relation? In this video, we're going to prove that we came up with the correct solution. So this is about proving recurrence relations. Uh, the solution to recurrence relations. And in particular, we're going to prove that the previous video that we did, video four, that we did, that we got the correct solution. In the previous video, we had this recurrence relation and we came up with this explicit formula. And remember, this was a little bit of a difficult problem. This was more difficult than the previous examples, which were a little bit more obvious. So this was a difficult problem, and we need to know that our answer is correct. And to verify that our answer is correct, we need to prove it. If you recall the previous video, this recurrence relation is what was given. This was given. And we came up with this explicit formula, our solution. Which means if we're going to prove this, we're going to assume that the recurrence relation is correct, right? Because that's what we were given. The part we're unsure about is our solution. So that's going to play an important part with how we construct our proof. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a proof by induction because we're doing a proof over sequences and the correct way to do this is with the proof by induction. Okay, so we're going to start out with our base case. In this case, we're going to let n, uh, let n equal 1 because that is where we start for both of these. So that's, a, that's an easy base case. Let n equal 1. Okay, so I'm going to start with the recurrence relation. And that's especially easy since C1 equals 1 is given. We don't have to calculate anything. And then if we go to our explicit formula, we're going to calculate this for C of 1. So if we put this into the formula we came up with, this is 3 to the power of 1 minus 1 over 2, which is 3 minus 1 is 2 over 2 equals 1, which is the same as the recurrence relation, so our base case holds. Now we're going to work on the inductive step. And this is where the fact that this, this first, this recurrence relation is sort of given as truth comes into effect. Because we're going to suppose that our explicit formula uh, works for the recurrence relation not the other way around. So our inductive hypothesis is going to be suppose that C sub K equals 3 to the power of K minus 1 over 2 for some K greater than or equal to 1. 
Now, I don't have to specify the recurrence relation because that's given as a truth. All right, this is a true thing. We know that c sub k equals 3k uh, minus 1 plus 1, and that c sub 1 is 1. That's, that's a given truth. So we're just checking, well, we're going to suppose that this formula over here works for some k. Okay, and what do we want to show? We want to show that this thing, c of k plus 1, is equal to 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1 over 2. That's going to be our goal. So I've copied the inductive hypothesis and our goal onto this next page, but given us a little bit more room to work. And just like every proof, we're trying to prove this equality so we cannot assume it. I can't start with that equality. I need to pick one side or the other and deduce the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this side over here. And I'm going to say C to the K plus 1. And I'm going to make use of the fact that our recurrence relation is a given. We know our recurrence relation works, is correct, is usable. So I'm going to just use that with my C of K plus 1. So what is my recurrence relation for C of K plus 1? Well, it's 3 times, well, it's the previous value. So in this case, this would be 3 C of K plus 1. Right. And so that is by the recurrence relation And now I have C sub K that I can use my inductive hypothesis on. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm now going to use my inductive hypothesis to say this is 3 times 3 to the K minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And this is by the inductive hypothesis. And then I'm going to start doing, this becomes an algebra problem. And we know that algebra is everybody's favorite subject. So I'm going to distribute this 3, and this is going to become 3 times 3 to the k minus 3 all over 2 plus 1, which I'm going to use the rules of exponents to simplify this further. And this is going to become 3 to the k plus 1 minus 3 over 2 plus 1. And I'm running out of space, so I'm going to move to the next page. These are both by algebra. The general rules of algebra. On this slide, I've rewritten where we were, so this was the last step. What's going on? This is the last step of where we were on the previous slide. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this 1 into a 2 over 2. Or you can think of me multiplying a 2 by over 2 by it. But what this is going to do is now I have common denominators. So I can combine these. And I have 3 to k plus 1 minus 3 plus 2 all over 2. I simplify this. I'm going to have 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1 all over 2, which is exactly what was to be shown, right? As we can see with our goal here, this is exactly what we were trying to show. So, which, oops. So we have just proven that our solution for the recurrence relation is correct.